Hey everybody, Rory from ANS Gear. We're looking at the brand new CS3 today. So we've got a gun right here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, open it up, put it on the table, look at it, take some of it apart, see what makes it tick. So CS3, here we go. So we've got the same kind of box set up as we saw on the LV2, where you've got a sleeve that goes around the outside now. Got some information on the back there. Pretty much the same stuff for the sleeve. Go over there, sleeve. Uh, all right, so let's open this up. Got that knife cloth, uh, soft hard case, I guess. It's still got a, it's, I think they call it semi hard case. Um, so you've got the cloth covering on it. Uh, has that handle that's kind of like on a, on like an elastic. So you can use it as a handle, but then when you let go, it tucks itself back down inside there so it's not sticking out. So zip it. There we go, and we'll open it up. So on the bottom section, you're gonna have your gun and then your toolkit right there. So we'll pop that out, put that to the side. Then here you've got your manual, you got a barrel sleeve, you got some grease, you've got your CS3 spares baggie, so it's got all your jazz for you know extra O-rings, everything you might need inside there. Planet always has a nice comprehensive parts kit, so if you ever need to do your own work, which you should learn how to do, that is definitely in there. Here is the hard face bolt because it does come with the soft face bolt already installed on there. And then we've got our S63 barrel. So we've got our back right here. So this is a 685 back. And this black one should be a 689. Yep, 689 back. Uh, and then we've got our tip. And they're still reverse threaded to put on and off. So remember that uh, for the front and the back. And then the back is obviously gonna screw on the same way. If you haven't seen the S63 barrel, you can see right here that this doesn't look right as far as the back end of an autococker threaded barrel. That's because you need the insert to be in there to create the back end of the barrel right there. So that's your threaded section. This is your back end of the barrel. If you tried to put this in, it would thread into the gun, but you'd have this gap between the end of the barrel and the breech right here. Plus you're missing your insert. So you'd just be breaking pain all day long. So there is our barrel setup. Put this on real quick so you guys can get a look at the gun complete. And there you go. All right, so I'm gonna take the barrel off. And I'm gonna close the case up. Actually, I'm gonna to take the barrel, I'm gonna put the barrel away. We don't really need that for what we're doing. We'll put our barrel in there, take this, and just move it off to the side a little bit right there. And then we can look over the gun. So um, low rise geo feed neck on there, and it is, um, it has that index section on the feed neck lever. So when it closes, there's a gap in between the, the uh, section of the feed neck right there. And that little indexer will go into that little gap and it'll keep the lever from being able to move up and down and be pushed up or down and make it come undone. This keeps your lever closed. So you're less likely for it to pop open and then your loader to pop off while you're playing. So that um, that's kind of the newest feature for the feed neck right there. They implemented that on the LV2 as well, uh, but that's now on the CS3. Uh, the front has the grip on here which is just removable like that. And then we've got the AA batteries that fit up on the inside there. And that really holds them securely in place. Uh, you're not gonna get them disconnecting while you're playing or um, disconnecting for just a split second, shutting the gun off, anything like that. So that definitely um, is a really, really nice system to hold those AA's in place. On the back end here, the grips, uh, have been redesigned so that they are very streamlined through here. So whether you're shooting three fingers 
whether you're shooting with two fingers on the bottom, however it happens to be, it fits nice and comfortable in there. Um, and then just the ergonomics all over of the gun have been slightly changed. If I'm not mistaken, it's slightly longer. This back grip is a little bit thinner because they've changed the board design and we'll look at that in a minute. And then also where the engine actually sits inside the gun has been brought down slightly so that it is more in line with the, um, with the gun right there. So it makes it a more compact system. So when your gun's up and you're looking down it, it's not as tall and it's uh, very pointy. So wherever you're going is actually where the gun is gonna be shooting. And then it's stretched out a little bit further. So it's a little bit more comfortable. And then the uh, bottom of the grip right there, really streamlined, making it nice and comfortable. So let's pop these off. So they come off the same way, slide them forward. And then you can take this off by just lifting this up like that. And then you can pull this off. Now, one thing I have noticed just playing around with this gun a little bit is if you have the, um, you know, let me just do this real quick. So this will come off. If you've already put your bolt on, you've latched it down like that, and then you go to try to put these on, it's gonna pop your grip up. Now I think you can hold it down and get it to do it. I think. I've never actually tried to hold the bolt in place and then push the grip on. But yeah, it doesn't want to go on there. So if you want to put your rear or your grips back on, you have to have your bolt up or out, and then you can get these rear grips on and you can lock them down and then you can drop this down. And this kind of holds, I didn't get this backside in. It's just another kind of a uh, way to capture the rear grip and make sure that it doesn't come off or doesn't move. Um, I think that's cool. So I'm gonna lift that up. I'm gonna take these off. And pull that out of there. I can take the front grip off. And then you can see your board setup that's inside here now. So let me see if I can come in a little bit on this. So we've got this new sandwich style board where they're basically, the boards are piggybacking on top of each other rather than having a board that's laying on its, I guess you'd call it on its side uh, and taking up a lot of space in the frame. These are standing uh, on their edge and then they're sitting on top of each other. We can turn this one on. You can see that now just having this with the setup right here um, looks pretty small. But this right here, this little window is like um, kind of like a magnifying glass and it brings everything bigger and brighter and closer to you. So it's easier to see. We're just looking at the screen by itself right there. Let me see if I can just stick this on here real quick. That way you can see the difference right there. Well, you can't even see it, the glare is so bad. See that? And then look at that right there. So this is definitely, this brings it more to focus brings it bigger so it's easier to see on there. Let me put that back on there. Um, so the board, uh, I believe this board, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, comes with the Bluetooth functionality already built into it. So it has that Bluetooth upgrade already in there that you're able to get for the LV2 and put that board in. This already comes with it. So this will be able to function with the app on your phone and let you do all your programming through your phone. So that's pretty cool as well. I'm pretty sure that's built into there already, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, yeah, so the boards are on top of each other. We saw this board design in the um, in the LV2 as well. So really makes a lot of space, lets them run a lot of wire path through there and make it all really convenient and easy to deal with. Flip it over to the other side. We've got um, just the back side right here, and then we've got our trigger. So the trigger is the same as we saw in some other guns. Let me pop it out real quick. It comes out real easy. So let's just take a second, take this pin, pull the pin out, and then the trigger comes out right there. And you're able to adjust this. If you want to move the angle of the trigger around, you can change this all around by just tightening or loosening the screw that's holds uh, that goes into this barrel right here. And then you can adjust the angle of your trigger. And then you still have all your adjustments for um, start, stop, activation, uh, magnetic return, all that stuff in there. So if you wanna play around with all that, you still can. 
this would be a very uncomfortable trigger position, I think. So I'm going to move that back to the way it was right there. And then we can put that back up in here. So if you want to change triggers or adjust the trigger, pulling the trigger out is very simple. It's easy to do. Um, the eyes. So same latch system that we had right there. We can pop our eye cover up and out. They're using that light pipe system right there. So the eye sits down low. You can see the eye is actually sitting right down here. That's the actual sensor and emitter on the other side uh, for the eye. And then it looks through this bottom section, which reflects up and comes out the top section. Um, so it kind of works as like a periscope in a submarine in a way. Um, so let's just say that the the breach, the, there's a broken pane in there, or the ball, a ball was chopped or whatever. You're never actually going to get paint on the eye itself. You might get paint on the top side of the light pipe, or you might get paint inside here, but the actual eye is not going to get paint on it, or it's very uh, unlikely to get paint on it. And so it stays clean, it'll last longer, and then just cleaning your light pipe or cleaning the breech makes it really easy. You're not actually having to clean the eye itself. So that's pretty cool. And that just snaps on and off like that. You can do the same thing for the other side. Snap on and off. Makes it really, really easy. Right there. All right, so let's, uh, let's pop this off real quick. So we'll do that last, I know. People want to see that bolt, but we'll do this first. We'll separate our frames out. Let's remove the rear frame screw. Then we'll remove the front frame screw. And then we can pull those right off. So as you can see with the body right there, nothing on there. I love that. No wiring, no solenoids, nothing up on the top of the body right here or the underside of the body makes it very easy to disassemble and it makes it very straightforward to deal with as far as servicing right there like that. So on the bottom, on the frame side, we've got our pilot valve, our solenoid block right here. So this has our uh, spool inside of it. If we have to do maintenance on our solenoid, it's all right there. Pull this brass pin out and that will allow this to come up and out after we've disconnected it from the board and servicing the solenoid is super easy to do. Wirings run through here. You can see that there's a new kind of bracket that they've put in right here. This is part of the, looks like the bearing carrier for the trigger. And so the wiring is going to come up and through and then underneath that, and that keeps the wiring all in one place, keeps it nice and tidy. So you're not running into any issues with pinching wires or destroying any wiring right there. Runs up to this board right here. So this board is now um, like the battery terminal board, which we had, which sat right above this before in like the CS1 uh, and um, had a long wire that ran back that you had to have a wire tidy on to help keep it in place. Um, now you've got this nice large board right here. So this is your I board also has the terminals for your battery connection on there, uh, the little springy doos on there. So uh, all in one unit right there. So they've made that, uh, or simplified, they've, they've combined parts to make it easier right there. And I think that's super cool as well. All right. Switch is down here instead of being up along the top. Um, no eye ribbon or, or ribbon connector coming down from top to bottom anymore. Um, definitely streamlined a lot of things. Another thing on the bottom we'll look at right here, which is something that um, I always thought was weird or not, I don't want to say an issue, but just something that they could have addressed and they have finally is on all the other pops, most of the other pops, shouldn't say all of them, most of the other pops, the only way to adjust velocity, like right here, you got to adjust velocity right there is when the pops was closed because then the holes lined up and you could put an Allen key in there. Well, now the pops can move back and forth and it does not cover or obstruct the path to get the Allen key in to adjust velocity. So whether the gun is degassed or gassed up, pops uh, cap is on or off, doesn't matter. 
you can still get the correct Allen key in there and adjust it from either position. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, there's many times where I've um, degassed a gun to lower velocity, but kept the tank on and then realize, oh, I can't adjust the velocity. I need to pull the tank off because I want to keep the cap undone and then I can do it. So this saves those just those couple seconds, but still it just seems like that's the way it should be. Uh, all right. So that's our frame right there. And then regulator still inside here. So adjustments, you know, it's going to be the same through there like it was before. Um, I don't know if that's changed in any way, though. I guess I should take that off and look at it. I've taken most of the gun apart already, but I have not pulled the ASA off. So let's do that. See what's underneath here. Yep. So our piston and our spring still right up inside there, going through this top of the reg assembly. The adjuster is part of that inside there. Um, again, very simple reg design, easy to service, easy to um, deal with. Don't forget about this piece right here. I see a lot of times people take this, when they pull this off, this can fall out. Uh, this is the gasket that seals the ASA uh, housing or the ASA body right here to the frame right here. Um, so make sure that you pay attention when you pull your ASA off, that this doesn't fall out and fall down. People put it back together and then they don't realize that, um, or they don't know where their leak is coming from or don't know why it's leaking. It's, well, that part, it's not there anymore. You can keep it there. All right, that's simple. And let's go with this. So here is our new bolt, our power bolt. We're gonna unscrew this. That comes off of there, and then we can get this off of here. So this has our soft face on it right there. You can see on the inside there, it's rubberized. It's got these little fingers that help guide the ball, gently touching it as the bolt accelerates down. Um, these will bend backwards and kind of cradle the ball so that it is as soft on it as possible as it's traveling uh, up to speed. So moving that ball from the breech, the feed neck breech area forward and into the barrel. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that off without a piece of fuzz stuck to me. With that and that, I don't want to lose any of these pieces. Come on, focus. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Let's try moving this backwards. No there it goes. I got it. Took it a second. I didn't want to focus right there. We'll come back down for a second. There we go. Uh, so here's our switch right here. Got our spring that's going to go inside there. Our spool. That's going to ride up through there. There we go. And then our can and the back right there and our bolt. Take all those pieces off of there. Now I know that I can get that apart. It's just real tight, and I'm not going to be able to get it with my greasy hands, so that will come apart as well. Uh, but there we have it. There's our brand new Power Bolt. 
disassembled. Well, mostly disassembled. I'm not going to take apart the back end right here. We don't need to pull all of it apart. We can pull most of it apart. This has got some screws on the back that allows this piece to come off of there. Um, we don't need to take that apart right there. We just want to show you guys what that looks like on the inside. And then let's uh, put it all back together. Let's get our switch down in there, get our spring, get our spool. that on there, get our bolt into our can, and that together. Look at that, so easy, so simple, so straightforward. All right, let's get this back together. Screw in the rear. recommend grips first and the grips you got to make sure that you get these little tabs in place sometimes when I've put these on I can slide these forward like this and this tab on the back sticks up higher you gotta make sure you get that tab underneath and that everything fits nice and flush along there and same thing for the back. Sometimes if one of these is sitting up higher or this piece in the front is set off just a little bit, you won't be able to get the rear grip on. There we go. We we'll take our bolt, slide that in, and then there we go. Quite a piece of art right here. This is the CS3. Um, I've had a chance to shoot it. it. Shoots great. If you're looking for a really, really nice gun right here, guys. Uh, as with all the Planet guns, they've always made a nice gun. But the CS3 is their latest rendition in the CS line. Um, lots of colors. I believe there's six different colors of this gun, plus all the color swaps that you'll see available. Um, but the brand new CS3, it's here. We've looked at it. We've shot it. We've done a bunch of stuff with it. It's on the website. Pick yours up today at ansgear.com.